why does God allow false teachers and why doesn't he judge them for his people's sake? This is a video I've already talked a little bit about in my other videos, but I wanted to clarify it more in this video. God allows false teachers and false prophets in the church because he desires to judge everything in perfection. And in order for God to judge everything in perfection, he has to expose everything. And if you know anything about police officers, they will not just get the people on the bottom. If there's an organization of crime, they'll often get the people on the bottom first. Then they'll work their way up slowly until they get to the head. And once they cut the head off, everything else below dies. God's no different. Regarding each and every person who is born again, who is saved, he wants us either completely sanctified in Christ or completely exposed. That's how he works. And he allows the false to expose those who have made the choice to be false. And he allows his Holy Spirit and the angels to minister unto the real and to sanctify them, to be prepared unto every good work. That's the way it works. So God's going to always allow these false teachers. And there's a parable of, you know, the vine, uh, the, uh, the, the person who sowed the bad seed. And, and they said, hey, should we go pull up these weeds? And the guy says, no, 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 don't do that. Lest when you pull up the, the bad, you also uproot the good. And that's one of the reasons why God doesn't expose these false teachers fast and easy. Because people's faith intermingled with their faith walk would be completely disillusioned and not fully understanding. If God judges on this earth and starts pulling out the bad, and he doesn't explain it to you, you're going to be very deceived as to what's really going on. And that's going to impact even your good faith. Even the good faith you have where you're still growing, you're still trying to understand, it's going to impact it. So God allows these things to grow up together. And as they grow up together, he's going to judge the good, and he's also going to judge the bad. Okay? But a lot of people, they want to play games. And this is, I'm doing this video for all of you who have made the choice to be born again, but then choose a false gospel, walk down the, the wide road rather than the narrow road, because make no mistake about it. If you're born again and you're trusting in a false gospel and you're trusting in false doctrine, you're walking the wide road. The reason that is is because when you walk, when you believe those doctrines and you believe those falseness, Satan is not buffeting you and, and you're not abiding in Christ. You cannot truly abide in Christ according to John chapter 15 unless you're abiding in the true gospel. And that doesn't mean your explanation of the gospel has to be the same as mine or somebody else's. It means you must be completely surrendered to God, building treasure in heaven, not on this earth, submitting your life unto him in obedience. The true gospel, there's a lot of falseness out there, and the falseness will deter you from your actions towards the good. You can, there, I've met people who have solid walk with Christ. They're walking the narrow road. They are walking the narrow road. Make no mistake about it. But they have some false doctrines in them. But their heart is so right with God that even though they have uh, small false doctrines in them, they still go after God in terms of obedience and God is disciplining them. But most people who are caught up in false doctrines, the false doctrines are so overwhelming in their lives, so overwhelming that they lose track of a real relationship with Christ. That's what it means to walk the wide road. Because I assure you, if you are so indoctrinated by false doctrines that your relationship with Christ is completely impacted, you are not abiding on the vine. And that means you're not bearing spiritual fruit. And that means the Father is not pruning you from heaven. And that means you're not walking the narrow road. End of story. That's the end of it. You're not walking it. And there are many, many, many false, false cunning teachers on the wide road. And they deceive you. And they put you in a bondage. And they control you. And God allows all of this because he is going to judge everything in perfection, everything. That's why it says, I think it's Romans 9, 29 or 28. Um, he says, uh, the, the gifts of God and the calling of God are without repentance. Let me repeat that. The gifts of God and the calling of God are without repentance. You want to know why that is? Because God is going to judge everything. If God has given you a gift, He's not going to apologize for giving it to you because he's going to judge you in it. And if God has given you a certain calling and you are playing games with that calling, he doesn't apologize for it because he's going to judge you in that too. And everybody under you who is receiving false doctrine and who's made a choice to hang on to what's false rather than submitting themselves unto the truth, they're going to be judged along with you for the doctrine that they have 
not only preached, but believed. The reason, like I said, I'm doing this video is so people who are in the falseness can have some fear in them. You simply don't understand what you're truly doing when you decide to simply go after false doctrines. And you might say, well, Scott, what's your solution? Your solution is to obey the Bible. And the Bible says, seek and you shall find. That's it. If you want God so bad and you want the true gospel so bad, you will seek after it and you'll pray to God and you'll humble yourself. And I assure you, he will show you whose true, who true teachers are, his true mechanisms, vehicles, in order for you to walk with Christ, for you to be sanctified, he will show you and you will know what is true and you'll know what is false. And I'm telling you right now, if you have deceived yourself and you think for a second that God is not watching what you're doing and he's allowing everything to be organized so that he can judge everything perfectly, you're completely deceiving yourself. And if you're a true Christian who's walking the narrow road and you're sick and tired of these false teachers, you're sick and tired of the nonsense, it's probably not going to stop for a very long time because it is God's will to expose these people to the nth degree. He doesn't just want them ignoring Christ. He wants them ignoring Christ, and then he wants them very acutely judged in the choices that they made. It's going to get so specific. You're going to stand before God and then kneel before him, and the Lord's going to say, yeah, you rejected the true gospel in the narrow road, and you decided to walk the, the wide road. You're going to lie, and you're going to say, well, you know, I, even, I was disillusioned. You know, I had a bad couple of years, and, you know, but had the truth come, I would have gone after it, so you can't really judge me, you know. And God's going to say, well, let's take a look at your life. You know, when you rejected the true and you went after the false, you ended up receiving all these false doctrines from false ministers. And you didn't just consider them. You were happy about them, and you abode in them. And it changed your outlook. It changed how you, you view life, how you view success on this planet. And you went after it. And you became indoctrinated in everything these people believe. And what you don't know now is God has allowed those false teachers to be raised up to completely expose you. Completely. He's not going to just let you walk, walk the wide road. He's going to let you walk the wide road and bring teachers, false teachers and false prophets, and false messengers of Satan to completely expose you on every level. And I say this to put the fear of God in you. If you think even for a second that this is not going on, you are completely deceived. Completely. That's what God allows. If you read the book of Thessalonians and you read even Romans, that's what God allows to happen to, quote, believers who are completely out of the way. He allows them to become disillusioned, Number one, and then deceit. He allows you to get completely disillusioned, where you are just completely receiving the wrong things and you're getting energy from it. Then when you're really in that place, you're going to be ripe for deception. And when that deception comes, you're going to fall headlong into it. And these teachers are everywhere. And they're doing a horrible work in many people's lives. And what the Lord would say to you today is, Seek and you shall find. If you believe you're born again, then you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And you can get out of all these false doctrines. And you can find the truth if that's what you want. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. It is your job to seek out Christ's true ministers. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. That's what Jesus said. And you have to search out Christ's voice and his ministers. And I'm telling you, a lot of these false teachers... They're called of God. They're probably born again. They probably have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, just like Judas. Okay? These men are cunning and deceptive. They have figured out, because they're so clever, they have figured out that when you have God's anointing, and when you have, have God's gifts, and when you have God's calling that are without repentance, you don't have to use them for Him. It's almost like if you were to go to a bank and say, give me a million dollar loan, I'm going to start a restaurant. And they say, okay. And they give you a million dollar loan. And I know there might be some paperwork involved where you have to do certain things. I'm just talking about a cut rate basic loan where you go and give me the money, I'm going to do this. And even I've heard just with uh, people who get student loans. They get student loans. And guess what? They grab the money 
and they don't use the money for what they said. Once they get all that money, they go do something else with it. And guess what? Now that they have that money, the people who loaned it to them, they just want you to pay it back with interest. They may not be watching what you do with it. And there's a lot of people out there, false teachers, false prophets, these wolves in sheep's clothing, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you for sure, these people, they have realized the gift of God, the calling of God, the anointing of God is without repentance. And they get it and they say, wait a second, why do I have to lose my life? Why do I have to endure unto the end? Why do I have to preach the truth? I have God's anointing. I could preach the paint off the walls. I, I have God's gifts. I can study the Bible and I can twist it however I want. And that's what they do. And they're not building God's kingdom on earth. They're building their own kingdom on earth. They have taken God's gifts for the edification of his church. A vessel that said that they would surrender their life unto death and they would lose their life on this earth for God's purposes. They take all of that and they say, you know what? I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to do what I want to do. And it's going to be for my glory. It's going to be for my praise. They're going to worship me. They're going to do everything I tell them to do. These are going to be my disciples. And they are going to, I'm going to control them, and they are mine. They belong to me.